Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and wherever you are listening and uh, watching through YouTube, uh, this is the Iron Asylum podcast. I have a very interesting and special guest today, um, someone who I respect a lot in his field, who I go to a lot of uh, for a lot of advice um, in my own healthcare. Dr. Stephen Wellington, uh, thanks for coming on the podcast, mate. Thank you very much for having me. Now, um, I want to get uh, started into things because, um, you know, obviously you're here for a purpose today. Just want to get a bit of a background. Um, tell us, Doc, you know, I know you're, uh, you're a big fan of powerlifting, strongman, bodybuilders, things like that, but you used to do a bit about powerlifting yourself. Yeah, that's um, right. Tell us a bit about it. What, what, how how'd you get into it? Where, where did your love of lifting weights, where did it all come from? Sure thing. So um, you may not look at it, look at me when you think, oh, <laughs> yeah. he loves doing that stuff. But uh, so I think it was just my dad had bought um, Pumping Iron, you know, when I was a kid. I think that's everyone's first. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and that was obviously the army movies. And so I think when I was about, you know, 15, yeah. I was always told you're not allowed to lift weights till you're 16, but I couldn't stop until 15, started lifting weights with my dad. 15, yeah. Um, and, uh, and then it kind of grew from there and kind of came on and off uh, in terms of what else was going on in my life. Um, I, I would play a bit of rugby and it would kind of I'd try and balance both. Mm -hmm. um, but now I know kind of you, you can't, you know, if you're trying to do bodybuilding, you know, doing anaero aerobic sports, maybe it takes up a lot. Yeah. Detrimental for recovery. Oh. So I didn't really have kind of clear guidance per se. Um, I, I, I mean, I went to I was in America. I've met all the bodybuilders like in the nineties. Yeah. Cool. Was, then was when, my, when it was my, um, I was really into, you know, Dorian Yates, I've met him, met Ronnie Coleman, he had massive hands. I met Craig Titus. Oh yeah. He was, yeah, he, yeah. He was a creep even from the first 10 yeah, seconds. Yeah, I read some articles on him. He was a yeah, good creep. Oh yeah. Yeah. Even from the 10, first 10 seconds, he, he said, uh, you know, maybe I won't re repeat on in public format, but <laughs> I, I immediately knew that this, um, he was, he was, he needed, you know, Bit of yeah, help. Bit of a help, yeah. Um, the nicest was Flex Wheeler. He was the nicest guy. And when I found out he lost his leg, I donated some money to him. Good uh, on you, man. Yeah, just about a year or two ago. So um, uh, when I found that out, because even just the first, basically I was at the back of the queue and he had all these kind of groupies or whatever. Mm. And he saw me waiting there patiently and he just went, he just went hey, hey, come here. And he said, hey, what do you, what do you want? And he said, and I said, hey, I just want a picture. And he said, oh, yeah, sure. And we took a picture and he just chatted me like us, you know, yeah, yeah. just for 10 minutes. But it was, it was really, really cool. So that was good. Um, you say the 90s. I just got to clear something up because I only just found out you're 10 years older than me. Yeah. Um, so when people are looking at him, um, that's because, you know, you look after yourself obviously very well. But, um, yeah, so, yeah, big fan back in the 90s, things like that. And, um, my my personal, that's my favorite era was, was the 90s bodybuilders. They're, they're the ones I try and strive to be. Um, I got a question for you, actually. Just, yeah, just spark something for me because we'll get into our topic soon. But um, I studied civil engineering. Um, I didn't did know the, that. Yeah, yeah, did the degree. Um, I'm not just a meathead. Okay. But I found lifting weights and the bodybuilding lifestyle uh, essentially helped me keep in routine, helped me keep my discipline, accountability, and all that. Um, did that help? Because obviously, you know, studying medicine, you're mm -hmm. a doc, you know, that's 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 very high up, a lot more um, time strenuous than what engineering is, civil engineering. Mm -hmm. um, did you did you try and uh, keep some sort of format with weightlifting when you were studying and things like that? I, I mean, I, I did, and I always tried to to to. I pretty much lifted the whole way through medical school, but I mean, I the problem is I'd always end up with an injury or exams, and so I never did an actual powerlifting show. So I got more into the powerlifting when I had kids because I just thought, you know, it's too much work and effort mm. and time. So I just thought, I'll just go for powerlifting. And the problem is I'd just end up with some sort of injury that would put me out. And the main thing was just exams. It was just exams would roll around. And I realized I just um, hadn't put as much effort as I should have done to yeah, okay. the exams. And so then I'd just have to just um, cram uh, for the exams. And so that was a, a struggle. But saying that um, on my wall, at, at, when I was studying, uh, my favorite quote, one of my favorite quotes is, there are two pains in life, the pain of discipline and the pain of failure, mm. your choice. Um, and so I think it, it applies very much to bodybuilding too, as well as other aspects of-, of Dude, life. I think the only reason why I got my, um, I went as far as what I did was because um, bodybuilding kept me in that kind of discipline route. You know, I was always kind of having my meals, I was on a time limit, I was doing all these things. Um, and uni just kind of fit in, well, well, Jim literally was across the road from mm -hmm. with uni, mm -hmm. but I think that accountability and structure, you know, taught me to just keep things rolling through and it kept a nice balance in my life. And actually it was a good period of my life, although I never used engineering to my advantage as soon as I finished it. 
um, yeah, I, I went off and, you know, became a PT and now, now I'm here doing this, you know, so I don't regret anything. Mm. Um, but yeah, I, I find there's always the, the people that are successful in life in their own profession, whether they might be entrepreneurs, doctors or whatever, they always keep some sort of um, exercise routine for themselves. They not, might not be hardcore bodybuilders, but there's some sort of fitness orientation where they're trying to make their themselves better because they, they're out there serving the public, they're out there doing exams or doing long hours. There's that time where they don't actually get to spend to themselves. And that you might just do a 45 or half an hour workout, but you know at least you did that for yourself that day. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that's I think that's the case. So I'm always continuously either stressing my body in some way. So I'm I've just I last ate on Sunday, so I'm now five days into a five day fast with no food for five days. Um, but I just haven't been able to exercise because I've been so busy. So if but if I am eating, I'll you know I'll yeah, be, of be exercising so uh, and and in various formats. So I think I think you're spot on with the way. Um, people do that. Is it part of recovery? Do you think, like, in the sense that you recover quicker when you're able to get the time for yourself? I think it's. Um, I think it helps more mentally than anything. Mm. For me, um, there's nothing like that's why I, I actually people think I'm crazy if I train five a.m. now because mm. you know you never know what happens in your day, mm. especially now being a dad. You know, shit happens all the time. Yeah, you know, I get called from daycare because now I'm sick, or you know, I do extra clients or whatever. And um, at least I know at the end of the day, no matter how hectic the day has been, I said. I trained myself. I got to train myself today. It's not oh, I had to miss my session or stay mm. back or whatever, you know. So I found that kind of correlated and moved, you know, when I was when I was studying and things like that. And I find these these highly successful people when they have that thing for themselves, then they can commit to whatever they're doing without any yeah. kind of regrets. Yeah, you know? spot on. And it's like Mike Tyson used to do that, didn't he? He's like, he would, I'm doing that just because half the people out there probably aren't. Yeah, correct. Even if you yeah, didn't yeah. need to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Completely yeah. agree, dude. And look, I mean, someone like you, obviously, you're powerlifting, and you did mention to me um, in that point in time, you were dabbling with some performance enhancers um, back then. Yeah. So um, I don't mind openly talking about this because it was about probably, probably 17 years ago. Um, I'm not, you know, open. I don't raise it very often. It just feels like a lifetime ago, to be honest. Um, but I started off with obviously creatine when you start, and then um, pro hormones, so like androstenedione and uh, norandrostenedione. You know the ones that Mark McGuire, the yeah, baseball player, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and How were they on the body? I don't, I don't double. I'm not a big fan of um, pro hormones. How'd you feel? Like- I, I like. I kind of like them. I guess they were lighter, and I'm quite sensitive to medicines, anyways. Okay. So when I used them. Um, I, I didn't retain too much fluid as long as I didn't too, use too high a dose. So it was like two tablets there, I just use one. Yeah, I think I think a lot of people, especially as as we know, bodybuilders, which we'll get into as well, they they abuse the shit out of what they're doing. You yeah. know, so someone says take two, they'll take fucking twenty. Yeah, you know, so <laughs> it's just finding that sweet spot. And then like Ronnie Coleman says, and then let time grow you. It takes time to grow. Yeah, correct. So, yeah. Um, and then you just create that anabolic environment, just slightly anabolic to then grow. I could be totally wrong because you're the pro with this, <laughs> no. um, but at least it seems to make physiological sense um, from that. So yeah, so pro pro hormones, I did, um, and that was when it was legal. Um, yeah. But then I think I, I said um, doing kind of missionary and charity work in Africa for a couple of years. When yeah. I came back, um, I was just in a, a bit of a dark place um, in living in America, going to university and, and on my own, and I didn't really have the support networks I needed, uh, and, and 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 that I um, that people probably need when they're still young in mm. their early twenties. Um, and so it was going from this very institutionalized lifestyle into just, you know, whatever. And I think it was just me being quite insecure, mm. um, and thinking, uh, you know, having the internet to access, I thought, oh, I'll go for it. So, you know, it's probably about 22 and then started with testosterone and, um, Decker, and then I went straight to like um, Trenbolone as well. Yeah, yeah. But the thing is, as well, though, over there it's a lot more readily available. And I guess the quality is probably a bit better over there as well because it is, you know, again, more readily available. Um, where over here, you know, I find, you know, it's, it's, it's not as clean and things like that. So, you know, you're obviously introduced to those drugs and things like that over there. But I just want to touch on something. Mm. what you just said you're insecure um and i find a lot of bodybuilders are going down that way and i feel bodybuilding this is not a dig at bodybuilders or anything like that Mm. i'm saying this in regards to myself actually Mm -hmm. i think there is some sort of level of insecurity when you are doing powerlifting strongman or bodybuilding there is some sort of um need to feel big in a certain way, whether it be to impress other women or impress your mates or whatever it may be. Usually your mates, not the, the women well, don't really like it. I started it, so out lifting to, to get women and yeah. then funny enough, it was just to, 
get males attention you know like i'm sitting in the nightclub head of security thinking i'm the man because i'm the biggest guy in the nightclub hot chick comes up to me and goes oh are you sam pierce i'm sitting there i'm like yeah i, I am actually how can i help like, oh, my boyfriend's a huge fan <laughs> can you get a photo with you I'm like, fuck, man. Yeah, get a <laughs> fucking come over here. I'll get a photo with you, you know. But um, so that was my failed attempt at picking up girls, you know. But you know, look, uh, I think when we talk about insecurities, the mental health side of things can um, affect it because I, I've never seen personally, um, from a common sense point of view, uh, steroids using the um, you know right times aren't as dangerous as what people make out. It's just that what happens is that when when you have someone that's insecure, I find what steroids can do is they amplify that. So if you're insecure, you become more insecure. You know, yeah. if you're a, if you're a, I've never really seen road rage, but if someone's a, an aggressive person, they mm. become more heavily aggressive. You, yeah. you get where I'm kind of going Absolutely. with this. You know? yeah, yeah. Um, so I find like for me, on, on the other hand, I haven't really met too many people in the regards to, I always started training, you know, one, cause I was insecure. I want to get big bicep, you know, kills, get the girls type of thing. Mm. But I was never interested in taking gear myself. You know, I was always just, um, you know, I was always just training. I always swore I'd stay natural and things like that. And then mm -hmm. obviously as I'm getting into it more and seeing people around and sort of following Ronnie Coleman and Jay Cutler and all these guys, I'm like, man, I, I really want to look like that, you know. Mm -hmm. But the agreement to myself was I wanted to go well naturally as mm -hmm. a natural competitor, competing naturally to see, you know, if – if it's worth me actually going down the what we call the dark side. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and I feel doing that has always kind of kept me in, in my own lane. Like, obviously, as I said, I've still got my insecurities and faults and things like that, but I, I feel compared to other bodybuilders that I've dealt with over the years, um, I've kind of handled that a bit better because a lot of guys these days, because it is so readily available, with, with more access to the internet, we have social media now, we have easy mm -hmm. to talk to people, whoever we want, we can read and find out things, whatever we want to hear. Guys don't train for a couple of years first naturally, like mm. what you did, and start out with creatine and, and, and move up the ranks or whatever it is and see if you want to get a bit more serious with it. It's just like, all right, I got a gym membership. I want to get big. All right, who's the big dude? I'm going to go up to him. Hey, dude, what have I got to take to get fucking big? Yeah, they don't put the time. The and time. that's where the mental effect of things happen long term because when guys come off the gear, mm -hmm. you would, I'm sure you would deal with it if you haven't disclosed it about people battling severe depression, you know, mm -hmm. fucked hormones. Um, other health problems, you know, am I, am I talking yeah. down the right track here? Do you have experience Absolutely things like right. that? Absolutely right. The male brain doesn't really fully develop, I think, until you're about 25, maybe even late 20s. So yeah. the problem with using these sorts of things is it can permanently train, change your brain. Um, I have a receptionist that, that I work with, and um, she said that I deliberately do not date people that have used steroids or use steroids because of that implication of how it's impacted and affected and changed their brain permanently, possibly yeah. permanently. Because what happens is you're so used to seeing the, the big guy in the mirror. Mm. Um, and then when you stop everything one day, he's gone. Mm. You know, you're, you're a person like that. You know, you were, you were dabbling in a few things back in the day. You got serious in your sport. And then obviously, um, I take it by the sounds of things that could be wrong, but you know, you had a family and things like that and things obviously slowed up and your priorities changed. Yeah. How did you deal with that? Like, how did you, how did you, you said you were in a dark place when you first started. And I'm sure a lot of people yeah. are in a dark place when they first started. How did you come out of that? Like, how did you say to yourself, look, you know, maybe this isn't the best thing for me uh, mentally and probably health-wise long-term. Um, you know, I want to commit to my family. You know, even though you're doing things for right intentions, mm -hmm. you still, that, that big guy that you saw in the mirror, you know, you showed me photos before. Yeah. He's gone. Yeah, so yeah. how did you deal with all that? Um, I, think, I think it was hard. You're always pining for it. It took about a year to recover physiologically. So I felt like jelly. That's the best way to describe it. I felt like jelly for about a year. Um, and, uh, but it was kind of back in the day, the early noughties where you just, you know, even my dad was like, um, you know, you're not meant to come, he's a dentist. You're not meant to come off this straight away. You need to, you know, come slowly, but the problem is there's a bit of a debate, uh, you know, and politics within the medical field per se, um, about taking care of bodybuilders. Um, for, uh, to make, to speak more about me again with that, with that circumstance, um, I think it was like, I, I had a chat, I think with my, my dad found out and then my sister found out and, and they and they had a chat with me. Um, and, and it was just a very nurturing, kind chat, just like, you, you're doing okay. Mm. Like, um, and I could just see that it wasn't, uh, I could just see there, was not, there, was, there wasn't really a future with it, uh, for my future. And so it's probably a, maybe a year or so before I met my wife and probably two years before I went to medical school, I mm. um, decided to just to stop. And mentally it was, it was hard. You're always pining for it for like a few years after Yep. And years after, you're always thinking, oh, man, I need to, I want to get back to that. So could, could you could you class it 
as an addictive drug? I think it is. Yeah. I know people may say, you remember back in the, uh, there was that documentary where they were talking about the steroids, steroids hasn't killed anybody, steroids hasn't killed anybody. Uh, show bigger, me, bigger, faster, stronger. That's it. Yep. Yeah, 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 and yeah. they say, show me the bodies. And it's like, well, I can show you the bodies now. That was made 10 years ago. We I can, think it'd be longer, probably 15, yeah. 15 years yeah. ago. And now we can actually name, uh, yeah. I could name probably five off the top of my head of bodybuilders that are now dead. Mm. Um, so in that sense, it, it does kill people and it does, I think it is an addictive drug. I do. You've, you've suggested to me, because I'm, I'm, by the way, I want everyone to know I'm happy for you to talk about me today in regards okay. to, you know, because obviously you're my, you're my doc, I trust you, mm. you know, and I'm, I'm happy for people to hear the raw version from yourself, mm. right? Um, someone like me, dude, I'm not going to stop, you know, I'm probably body, but you've suggested for me to stop, you know, you have had that conversation with me. You said like, you know, long-term it is better for me to, you know, you know, I could be cutting years of my life and, you know, we've had that conversation before, but you know, it's, it's hard in my position dude, cause I'm a, I'm a pro bodybuilder. I love what I do. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, my whole business is based off me being a pro bodybuilder. I know it's not forever. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm not going to be doing things in my, you know, forties and fifties and things like that. But I still have, I feel I have a little bit of time left. Mm. Um, for me, um, moving forward, I don't, that's another thing I don't see enough with people. Like if I made this decision, which I did, how long have I been using it for now? Nine years. I've been using it for nine years now. Wow. That's um, not, I thought it would have been longer, to be honest with you, but um, it shows like have how- I, Have I aged that much, have I? No, genetic. <laughs> I was just gonna say, that shows how good your, your genes are. Um, but you know, look, for the first half though, I, I didn't have much education of what we have available today. So as much as I mm. said before, you know, there's a lot of bad information on the internet and more readily available. Mm. There is a lot more better people we can talk to and get in touch with as well. Yeah. Um, so for me though, I feel if you are gonna go down that path, it is wise to be looking into, you know, getting your heart checked, getting your bloods. Now I get my bloods done every 12 weeks, as you know. Mm -hmm. um, you know, for the person listening right now, because we all think oh, I'm sweet, I'm, I'm sweet, you know, I'm, I'm gonna be fine, you know. And mm -hmm. dude, I thought that, man, because I watched, I used to go off that video that you just said, bigger, faster, stronger. People mm -hmm. would say to me, oh, steroids, this, steroids, I'm like, fucking go watch that video. Mm -hmm. Right, then talk to me. And I, I was naive, dude, I, you know, I look at that. And now I've seen personal friends of mine and, and other top competitors I look up to, you know, um, they're passing away. And as a father, you know, I, I want to build a legacy and, you know, make my daughter have a beautiful life, but I also want to be there to experience it with her. Yeah. I don't want to pass away and just give her all my savings and she's got to go, off you go. I'm going to see her live her life. Yeah. You know, you know, the person listening to this right now that is being naive and deep down they are being naive, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, if they're going to not take the advice and say, look, I'm just going to keep pushing through anyway. Mm. What should they be looking for on their blood counts? You know, should they be getting, you know, like the heart scans that I got, for example, um, mm. what's your, what's your suggestion with that kind of stuff? So I think the, f the first, the first thing I can hear my dad saying, you're a bit of a politician with this, but, <laughs> and my wife saying you never answer things shortly, but there's a bit of a complicated one. I think first we have to say about the politics within medicine and also the way we're judged amongst our peers is that what would the average peer, what would your average peer do as a doctor? Mm. The problem is I find that there's a lot of doctors out there that would say to bodybuilders, <clears throat> don't come back. Like, here's your blood. I've had so many. But at the same time, I don't. I don't blame them though, because like it, I, I see their frustration because they've done ten years of work to get there, mm. and, and as a doctor, I see you're still studying now. Even as a doctor, you still got to keep up to date with everything. Mm. And when someone walks in the door and says, "Oh yeah, well I'm going to go fucking do it anyway," you be like, yeah. "Well yeah, don't come back." Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So I, I do. I do understand that side. But yeah, sorry, I cut yeah, you off. Yeah, and they're trying to keep their their own families safe by keeping their license. And yeah, so yeah. there are doctors here, even on the Gold Coast, who've been struck off. Uh, stepping over the line um, the problem is there can be a bit of a, a gray area so um, a lot of doctors just say end of story stop that's it and that's all the advice I'll give because of my history and my passion uh, um, and wanting to help um, I like to be a bit more engaging with, with patients um, about that um, so I think from my perspective the first thing I always advocate is is stopping and not using because I don't think it's physio physiologically good. Um, also kind of a covering my backside position. Yeah, yeah of course. Uh, but at the same time, I do think, um, I do th I do see pathology in it. Uh, at the higher the dose, the higher the pathology, mm. et cetera. Um, but then if the patient like you is not going to stop, like if I have a patient who's um, using drugs or using cigarettes or alcohol or, or even sugar and is not 
stopping, what I try and do is it's called um, harm minimization or risk minimization, where you try and engage with the patient um, to minimize the risk as much as you can. So I just want to say that in layman's terms, so a smoker is obviously not going to stop smoking. Yeah. You will obviously suggest things to them. Um, so it's so it's less, a bit more damage control is, is what we're trying to say. Exactly. Yeah? Okay, exactly. so someone on steroids, obviously like myself, you know I'm not going to stop. So yeah. you would look at me and say, okay, well, if you're not going to stop, your duty of care will come in and say, um, you know, I, I suggest this and this to just help prolong your life. Is that where you kind of in a way pushing but, towards exactly but then that's where i have to be careful like um i'll have people phone me and they go I, I need i want peptides and testosterone i'm like that is not how it works dude i gotta apologize on that front because like <laughs> i've i've recommended you you know a lot of my clients that's okay because they're using stuff and they'll come back to me and say oh yeah i went and saw dr wellington you know and i you know asked some tests and he wouldn't give it to me he just told me to leave and i'm like i would fucking too i didn't say go to that yeah you know, yeah i said just go get your bloods done and, and have a chat to him about mm. what i've had the chat to him about like you know People just think, oh, yeah, sweet. Oh, you must be getting your gear through. Oh, go, go see him. Like, fuck me dead. Yeah, like, oh. yeah. And that's what my wife hates. I think I, I think what I'm fi- what I do find, and I don't mean to disparage anybody because like Sam, you are one of the most humble patients I have. Um, and so that's why I love engaging with you yeah. uh, with, with this is, is that you're open. So, yeah, it, 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 you're open to the position that we're in as GPs, that we want to help. Some of us do want to help, but the difficulty of helping mm. um, because of um, the lack of compliance. So bodybuilders very rarely will stick to what you ask them to do. Um, as you probably know with your PT patients possibly, mm-hmm. um, you stick with what you ask them to do um, that, you know, and, and all the other things that come with it. So a lot of doctors just don't even go there. Um, a lot of urologists and, and, and endocrinologists. So yeah, so, so I, don't, um, I don't prescribe testosterone to anybody who's using. Mm. Um, I give them a good flush out period before we even look at it to see if their body's recovered. Um, and, and so kind of that's my position, no peptides. Um, we don't know the long-term studies of those. Um, and I usually get colleagues involved as well, just to check over to make sure what I'm doing is, is right. Mm-hmm. Um, and just to make sure that we're not missing anything with patients. When we're looking at a harm uh, minimization or uh, um, uh, position, you know, yep. as a doctor, um, what we do is we look at systems of the body. So we look at different um, systems of the body that steroids um, impact, yep. right? So things like, and I usually just say top to toe, you know, it's so easy to think from the top to the toe. So we think of like, you go with hair, so hair loss. So it encourages hair loss. So you might want to look at something like a finasteride or minoxidil to, to, to prevent that. The mental health, you know, we go to the brain next, mental health and the impact that it has on mental health, which we touched upon. Yeah, you've um, referred me to a, to, a, to a psych before just for my own mental health as well, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And you know, you were saying before about how every successful person does something outside, like some sort of exercise. I think every, spe- uh, every, every, every special, but every person that's successful also sees a therapist or psychologist. It used to be like seen as a bit of a crazy thing back in the day. Mm. But in reality, like you need to be aware of your actions because just because I'm a bodybuilder, I've got insecurities, right? Mm. You would have your insecurities. Mm. Your missus would have insecurities. You know, there, there, there's a lot of people that have insecurities from their, you know, their younger life that we don't know we have. It's good to go see a side because it's good to be aware when those things are coming out, which could be holding you back from your own success in your own field. You know? Exactly, exactly. And especially with like sports and performance as well. Definitely so do. Every yeah. athlete, like every tennis player will have a, a sports psychologist. And that's why it's really important for like bodybuilders as well to see kind of psychologists. Probably the most important. Probably even more so because mm. the people that are attracted to bodybuilding in the first place. Yep. Um, to iron out any of those um, underlying um, issues. Um, and then you keep going with the rest of the systems. I, I don't want to drag this out. I would stop if no, that's no, the case. No, no. But you know, we then go down to the rest of the body. So thyroid, uh, thyroid gland here in the neck, um, voice changes with st- you know steroids and growth hormones in particular. Um, uh, then we go to the heart and the lungs. Lungs are usually pretty good. It's the heart that takes a really big beating. Well, the heart, you know, let's just, you know, let's go ahead and talk about me. You know, I'm mm. not, I'm not afraid of anything. Um, I have an enlarged heart. Um, and you know, as we know, I did some research myself, but you, you told me in our consult that a lot of athletes anyway can have an enlarged heart, like obviously Olympic swimmers and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, in my situation, obviously I'm pumping a lot more blood through the body because of the size that I am. Um, so we had to take some, some health checks, which all came back clear, obviously, but, um, we went through, I'll, I'll let you explain what we went through and why, but like CT scans and that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Can you explain to the viewers what we went through and why? Yeah, sure thing. So, um, when I first saw, um, 
Sam, we just did a bit of a health checkup and um, I'll be honest, I was, I was quite excited because of my history of, you know, interest in bodybuilding. I was like, wow, an IFBB pro, that, you are an IFBB, is that right? Correct, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and so I, I know what that means and how hard it is to, to be that. Um, I just thought, wow, that, Thanks, that's Doc. so cool. No worries. Appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it's 10 years of, of pure hard work and discipline. So I, I respect that, really do. Um, and so I was, that's awesome. So I thought, I'll just give you a bit of a check over and took that systems approach to you. And I think we just kind of started off looking at your heart. So looking at blood pressure. Um, I can't remember if your blood pressure was high, was it in the first? No, blood pressure was all was clear. Okay. That was all clear, yep. But your heart sounded like a like a train, you know, it was like a yeah, like yeah. really strong. Um, and I just thought, you know, knowing what, I, knowing what I know about bodybuilders and their propensity to something called left ventricular hypertrophy, but with the heart the ventricle becomes thicker and thicker and thicker. And what I heard, I thought it might be a good idea just to get it checked out. Mm. And also, I'll be honest, I, I didn't realize you were actually one, no offense, but I thought well, we better get a CT calcium score done just to make sure that you aren't clogging up prematurely mm. from the impact of any sort of... But that's, you know, as I said, but people don't get... That, that's that's a heavily dangerous aspect of it, isn't it? That, yeah. that calcium buildup. Absolutely. So uh, so calcium buildup, so John Meadows, is it? Just mm. died recently from a buildup of calcium in his, his heart from prematurely prematurely he left some kids just behind, just, just for the viewers um who don't know john john meadows dude, yeah. he, he's known as like a guru he's one of the smartest guys out there mm. you know not to say he was careless uh, he mm -hmm. just may not have been aware or whatever but you know in the bodybuilding world heavily respected mm -hmm. you know it just goes to show someone as healthy and and as as guru bases and respect as he is mm -hmm. these things can still happen yeah you know so the ct scan yeah i found when i because you, you, when you told me to go look at these things because we said the, uh, I had to get the ECG, CT scan, uh, sleep apnea test, blood pressure test. They were the four things we all checked. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, but the CT scan to me kind of raised the biggest fears with me looking at, you know, as far as um, not not my actual results, obviously, but just mm. seeing, you know, the calcium, how, how damaging that can be to the body, yeah. Yeah, and I think your CT calcium score is wasn't too much of a concern for me. It was more yeah, the, echo, zero. the echocardiogram yeah. was my concern. It was, it was showing some, it was moderate to severe left ventricular hypertrophy with, with systolic, I think, dysfunction. Um, when you start to get that dysfunction, that's when you're st looking at irreversible damage that you're doing to your heart. Mm. Um, so there are some natural athletes that will get some ventricular hypertrophy. Um, Non-genetic, genetic, they can get it, and that's a different issue. I'm yep. going to go onto that where athletes die and fall down in the, um, you know, on the soccer pitch. But um, and but that's usually the non-genetic is usually reversible because it doesn't get so severe. It's where the steroids, um, the steroids can come in and they can make that happen. So um, I remember we had that chat. It came back, and I had a chat with an exercise physiologist and had a good read up, like I read up about it because it's an area that I wasn't too familiar with, and um, and I've been studying and and, and still. I'm interested in that because if you're one of my patients. I want to know more. Um, but that kind of concerned me. I thought, oh my goodness, I know Dallas McCarver died of heart failure. Mm -hmm. I know um, that British guy died of heart failure, um, all young. Um, and bless his heart, rest in peace, Sean uh, Roden yes, died yeah. of the similar sort of pathology. Yeah. And so I could see a lot of these guys um, passing on as a result. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so. And so um, it made me think, how can we help you with regards to this and, and to make you aware of the risks you're taking? Mm. And yeah, it, it made me very aware, dude. But there's one thing I've noticed with a lot of bodybuilders as well, and I don't know if you see this in other patients, but I came off gear completely last year for six months, completely just, mm -hmm. you know, I spoke to you about wanting to free some sperm and everything like that for the future and whatever. Mm -hmm. So we did all that. That was that was all good. Um, but I just came off just because every year I usually come off about three or four months anyway, just because I just want to rest, you know. Mm -hmm. um, when I came off, a lot of people tend to fall off a little bit because obviously, they're not, as you said, you're not as motivated. You don't recover as quick. You're not as strong. Appetite's not going through the roof, so you can't, you know, um, digest much protein and et cetera, et cetera. People kind of get the, the wind out of their sails and they're like, oh, fuck this. And they just kind of veer off, they let the body go a little bit where mm -hmm. I made sure I always kept in my diet, stayed lean. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I probably lost about, you know, 15 kilos, but, you know, I felt really good, felt really healthy and, and things like that. Do you notice a lot of bodybuilders when they're off everything, they kind of lose that wind in their sails and they don't really take care of themselves? I, I think they should be taking care of themselves more so that in that time 
even when they're on. You know, yeah. they kind of let themselves go, get a bit overweight or whatever. And um, mentally too, and mentally be prepped for that off period. I've seen one athlete, um, one bodybuilder, six weeks of steroids, and I think three months later off, he still has low testosterone. So it's like, so for six weeks, you then have three months with low testosterone. Could that know? possibly be genetic as well, though? Yeah, so that made me wonder, do you have like unique, obviously you have unique genes um, to be an IFB, IFBB pro, and do you then recover quicker when you come off? It, it's an interesting question to pose. Um, and so I think, yeah, in terms of prepping mental and also physical is, is really important. Otherwise you lose your way, not just in the bodybuilding, but just in life as well, you know? Dude, I'll be honest with the viewers, you know, it's hard, like when I had Naya, um, bodybuilding is still my passion and I just want to explain that part there because even when I'm off the gear I still just live the bodybuilding lifestyle I just love it I love training I love dieting I love doing all that not for a show or anything I just I just like it and as I said to you before like help me get through uni well guess what it's helped me with my discipline and accountability and structure for the gym and my own business and um, whatever but you know I do look at things and I'm starting to realise my, priori my priorities are changing mm. um and, and was it the heart scan that did that or is it a few other things? Seeing people I know pass away, mm. you know, like, dude, when when Sean passed, man, uh, that morning, and I've seen a few people pass because I, like, knew him personally. And he used to message me, like, once a month, just check in, hey, dude, how are you going? And, dude, I'm a nobody as a, as a pro, you know, like, I'm, I'm only a new pro. And for him to kind of take the time out and, and message me ever since we, we spent some time on Arnold's, I'm like, man, he's, you know, he, I consider him a friend, you know? Um, and later that afternoon when it all hit me, I had to get night, I had to get night picked up by Paula because I was just off. Mm. As soon as she picked her up, I went upstairs and I just broke down, like bro, and I just couldn't stop man, like crying, you know? Mm. And then the part that makes me tear up even even now is that you know he's left his his daughter behind mm. and that just dude there's something i just can't get past with that you know i want to talk to my psych about it but i just when you do anything in life i feel you got to give it 100 mm -hmm. percent. you know what i mean mm -hmm. and um for me uh have i have i lost my fuel my fight no no way i'm, I'm still training hard like, i train hard today like everything's feeling really really good and and, and whatever but um you know i find it's it's hard in that way where you know before I had kids, I'm like, yeah, fuck it, you know, I'm, I'm a bodybuilder and this and this and this. But now I'm doing everything because I want to have and, and support her with a good lifestyle and, you know, and, and these things are starting to change, which has made me think about a few things. And I've kind of given myself realistic but very hard timelines. Mm -hmm. For example, like if I'm on the Olympia stage by the age I'm 32, I'm out. Mm -hmm. I told you on, the, on the phone, you know, like yeah. when you gave me my results and you suggested, look, you know, do you want to, are you going to keep doing this? I suggest you come off and blah, blah, blah. I said, no, no, no like this is my goal and I want to, if, if I don't get to the Olympic stage and win a pro show before, by the time I'm 32, you know, I can say I've given it my all and mm. I'm out. Mm. And I can, I can come off the gear and although it would be shit, I can come off for six months, cold turkey, which we just said before isn't the best thing to do. I mm. could just come off and it didn't, didn't affect me, dude, right? Mm. So mm. I'm kind of lucky in that way. Yeah. Um, you know, so I know when it's time to leave things, you know, and leave for what it was, it's, 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 it's done and dusted, you know. I think if you are going to kind of go down that path, you need to have targets because a lot of people are just taking gear their whole yeah. life and they're just taking gear, you know. Don't get me wrong, I love it, dude. Like when I'm back on, training hard, fucking life's good, you know. Like sex drives, like yeah, man. Superman. So, yeah, Superman, Batman and um, the whole call mixed in one. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But, you know, like when, when the show's over, the show's over, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's what I find. Like there's no long-term goal with these guys mm. you know there's no realistic thing to say you know what like if i don't achieve this by this like i'll give you some i said i wasn't getting on the gear unless i went well naturally correct mm -hmm. i also said if i didn't turn pro by 25 i'm out turn pro when i was 25 i said mm. all right uh, my first pro show what i do i can't come last I got 12th out of 14, but I didn't come last. Mm, <laughs> right. There you go. Yeah. And then I said, the next pro show I want to do, I want to crack the top 10. Good. I got seventh. Okay. So sweet. So I said, all right, well, when I'm 30, I want to be on the Olympia stage. If mm. I'm not, I'm out. Well, we had COVID for two years. So that's pushed me back two years, you mm. know? Now, um, I'm not saying why things are the right thing to do, but do you like, 
you kind of agree with what I'm saying there that people should, if they are going to go down that road and not listen to a doctor and say, I'm going to, I'm going to try things out for myself or whatever they want to do. Like mm. I do think you have to have kind of realistic targets and, and goals that say it does make it easier to come off because yeah. if you're just doing it and you come off, you've got really nothing to kind of live for and the depression kicks in and whatever. Mm. I look at it and I go, well, if I can give something a hundred percent, and, and 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 no, I give it hundred percent. I'm not going to be in the pub one day going, "Oh yeah, I could have, should have, would have." Yeah, you know what I mean. Like yeah. we want to live our life without regrets. Hmm. What's your aspect on that? You know, I to- yeah, I totally, hundred percent agree. There's something we have called uh, I forgot the name of it, but like self perception, where you can't really see yourself that well. Um, it's like, for example, if we have patients on antidepressants, like I can't really tell, but you say to their partner, you go, what do you think? And they're like, yeah, it's really helping. Thank you. You know, uh, that's that sort of thing. So you can't really see it. And in that sense, that's why, um, I see that's really, really important to have a, somebody or people around you to, to, to keep you healthy and well. And, and that's why I see my goal as well. So like with you, we've been able to say, and also as well, being a bit older and having my own kids as well, mm-hmm. I can kind of be a bit of a mentor role and I, and a mentor, and I, I, I kind of like that, you know, um, from what I know and, and I can say, look, even though I've never been there, I don't know exactly what it takes to get to be an IFB, IFBB pro, pro, you know, personally, I kind of have an idea given what I've done in the past. But also with my training, I look at you holistically uh, and I say risk minimization. Okay, I know this is your business. And being a GP, that's part of me. This is your business. We have to protect that to some degree because that's your income. That's what your daughter, Naya, is yeah. it? Naya is also relying on. It's you mm. bringing money into the home. So um, we've got to protect that. But we also have, have to have um, an extrication strategy to get you out of that eventually when the time comes. You have this goal where you want to be 70 and say, I gave it my best shot for this dream that you've had for probably 20 or more years. Mm. Um, but at the same time, you and I both need to be aware of the, the risks that there are there and minimize those so that you don't do anything that's going to harm you in the long run. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's not an exact science. That's the hard part about it, Um, you know, at at this point. But, um, and there's not many studies done around this area of of men with steroids and and long-term, you know, studies of those, understandably so. Um, So it's an interesting, an interesting one. Um, I don't know if I've answered your question directly. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I just wanted to kind of see, like, if someone was listening in. Yeah. You know, I, I'm kind of telling them now, like, if you don't really have a purpose of, you know, for it, mm. don't be abusing the shit. Yeah. You yeah. know, like, at the end of the day, what are you, what are you getting out of it? Yeah, I think that's absolutely right. And obviously, dosages are important. So, like, the long-term implications of having lower dose testosterone is going to be less so. Have you have you had guys come and talk to you about? Um, have you had guys come and talk to you about the doses they're running, and you just go, "What the fuck are you doing?" You know? Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. So, um, absolutely. So, um, like, obviously, I know what I've used in the past. I know what the dosages made me feel like that sweet spot where I felt healthy. I mean, I was using. Oh man, like train a gram of test a week, just trying to do these things. I'm only a small guy, but I was just like, I felt, I felt really ill. That's the, it, I'm, I'm so glad you said that because guys come to me and they sit down and they're like, oh yeah, I want to do my diet and training. You know what they're really there for? They want to know what the secret fucking potion is that I'm going to tell them to take. Mm-hmm. And I tell them what to take and they look at me like, oh, we're just going to start with this, are we? Like, it's like, no, nah, dude, like, I actually have to show them what I run. So mm-hmm. like, this is what I take. I get my laptop, swing it around, show them. And they probably go, no. Uh, no, it's what shit is that saved. Yeah, you like know? Lee Priest, where people go, I can't believe that. Dude, like Lee Priest walks around now, mm. if you're following him on Instagram, he's got arms three times the size of mine. And you can tell he, like, he doesn't train or anything. He's just, when you're born that way, you, you got it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like Ronnie Coleman was, well, he was competing in the Olympia naturally, naturally. Mm. When he got on the gear, that's when he started winning. And that Do was you know what I mean? Sp- like, it's, 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 that's what people don't understand. They think there's some fucking secret thing. And, and, and I say this because I was doing that. Mm. Still remember, I went over. I went over and won the junior universe. I came. I came back, and and John Davy, um, owner of All Dream Australia, he was coaching me, and um, I came back. It was about three months after the show, and we said, "Okay, let's hook up again and start doing some work." He goes, "What have you been doing?" I said, "Oh man, you'd be so proud of me. I'm stepping shit up, you know, because I thought in my head I won the universe as a junior. Mm-hmm. I was taking more gear. I'll fucking I'll turn to Ronnie Coleman." Yeah, mm-hmm. told him I was like, "I was yeah, I've done two grams of test, gram of Decker, hundred D ball day," and he just he looked at me. 
just didn't say anything. And he looked at his assistant and she was laughing because she's obviously in the scene too. And he's like, you're a fucking idiot. That's exactly what he said. He goes, you're a wow. fucking idiot. 100 deep all a day. Uh, 100, 100 meg. Did you not feel awful? Dog shit, dude. Wow. Uh, well, so truth be told, I did only run that cycle for about three weeks. And that's yeah. why I said, let's okay. catch up because I felt like shit. I had back acne and, you know, I'm, I, like I'm, I've never had to use super high doses. Like, you know, tests for me, highest... I go to now it's maybe 500 meg. Yeah, I think that's a bit of a, you know, yeah. And, you know, I, I was doing that. So, you know, four times. So we literally quartered everything back to what he told me to do originally. I mm -hmm. suggested, sorry. Um, quartered everything down. A few weeks later, quartered because, how are you feeling? I said, oh, strong again. I'm eating. Because that's what he said. He goes, are you eating? I said, no. Nah. My appetite's fucked. He goes, oh, okay, funny that. He goes, you got acne everywhere. He goes, you look like shit. You're mm -hmm. breathing like shit. Mm -hmm. And um, how's your sleep? I said, I'm asleep shit. And he goes, well, if you're not eating and you've put on, you know, five, six kilos, what do you think you've put on? Mm, mm. Water weight. Water, water, water from estrogen spill yeah. over. So I'm walking walking around thinking I'm the man. Mm. But as soon as I cut all that shit out, and it's so funny, dude, and people, I know people don't believe me when I say this, but what I went back to and quartered my doses down, you know, I'm using that today. Mm. And people would still look at me and go, nah, he's full of shit. Mm. Yeah, he's full of shit. It's like, nah, dude, it's... You're a doctor in this, right? So this has been my perception, yeah? This is what I, this is what I say to these young guys when they, when they question me. I say, you got a headache, right? The, the packet says take two, two tablets for, for an adult. Mm -hmm. If you took the full packet, it doesn't make your head away, headache go away any faster. It doesn't make it go away forever. You still gotta get a headache again one day. It only really puts stress on the, on the insides. And if you're doing that every time you had a fucking headache, it's probably going to cause damage from the Panadol mm -hmm. one day. Mm -hmm. Am I right in saying that to, to someone? You know what I mean? Like to a certain extent, obviously, but you know, mm -hmm. that's, that's the example I try to get him to understand because more is not better. Absolutely. You know? uh, absolutely. And obviously I have to be careful. I'm not advocating any sort of um, steroid or drug use or dosages at all here, but uh, I can speak from personal experience with that. I absolutely concur for me it, because I'm smaller. It's like, um, 250 milligrams of testosterone a week. It, was, it wasn't very much. Um, and then a bit of an, an andrelin. It was only 200 milligrams. It was tiny amounts, you know, but when you compare that, that's probably more like what the guys in the seventies were doing and they're alive in, in, into their seventies and eighties. Um, a bit obviously I, obviously I don't do that and I don't advocate that at all as a, as a physician, but abscess, you're spot on, you are spot on. And like Ronnie Coleman says, it take, it's, it's an anabolic environment plus time. That's what it, that, that's and what it's about. And consistency. And consistency. People don't realize, man, like I had, you know, I had a breakup at the start of last year, you know, uh, which is all good. We're still friends today, but you know, that, that heavily affected me. Mm. Um, you know, I started up the gym last year, had a lot of injuries last year. I was sick a lot last year. So I had a, you know, hard 12 months mm -hmm. of last year, not to make excuses. Then I came off for the last six months because I just thought, you know, I just want to have a break of everything because I'm just fighting a losing battle here. Good idea. Right. Why I say that is because you can do a lot in a year if you have a very consistent year. Mm -hmm. People forget that. Mm -hmm. Now, if you did that consistently for 10 years, well, you probably will be an IFB pro. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't mean you have to take fuck loads of gear for 10 years, mm -hmm. but that's what people don't understand. It's, it's like every day, you know, you got to eat your five, six meals. Mm -hmm. You got to train well every single day you know yeah. you've got to get adequate sleep every fucking day mm. how many people actually do that yeah you know yeah. what i'm saying like yeah. oh no i don't dude i don't like i missed a meal yesterday i'll be honest like i'm a pro body but i missed a meal yesterday mm. there's times I, I i miss there is times well, i was off a couple of months ago but you know if, mm. if, if paula called me because whatever she was working she said go get nine and i had to train i'm like Fuck, i'll get nine and take it to the park mm. Mm -hmm. you know mm. there's, there's things that come up where i've got to stay back at work or whatever mm. But, you know, you think, like, you got to say to yourself, like, you know, are you doing everything consistently? And if, if mm. you can say after a full year that you've eaten all your meals, trained how you had to train and whatever it is, clearly you don't have the genetics for it. Don't start mm. up in the doses because it's not going to change shit. Yeah. Because what I see with other guys now, which I'm sure you deal with, mm. they tell you what they're taking and you go, okay, when you do turn pro, where the fuck are you going to go? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, you go. So what are you you're going running, to You're running two grams of tests. You know, you're running a, this and, and, and whatever. You're doing that just to turn pro. Mm. Mm. All right, sweet. You want to do a pro show. And trust me, dude, when you go from winning amateurs and you go versus the pros, seriously, mm. my first show, dude, I walked backstage. I'm like, what the fuck am I doing here? Right. I was just a fish out of water, dude. Like, I was like, oh, my God. Like, I'm going to get last. Luckily, I didn't get last. Yeah. But, you know, like, you know, it, it's next level. What are you going to do to your body now 
to even be competitive against these guys. Yeah. Clearly, you don't have it. You know yeah. what I mean? Just, it's, it's, uh, I think you told me, you said that you can spot people. Like, you just look at their calves. You know, that's where it has to be that people have to have that self perception to say, I've got tiny calves. You know, or, um, I can see it in their blood work. I'll be like, you've got Gilbert syndrome, you've got this and that. Like, you are never going to be a pro athlete of almost any sorts if you have this sort of pathology. Um, and that's, that's, that's where I feel the steroid side of things can fuck up their, their mindset because they think, no, 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 I, I can get bigger. I can believe it, you know? Mm. But as I said, like, you know, unless you're doing things well naturally, mm. you're not going to make it. Yeah. Uh, that, that's the hard truth. And yeah. people have to understand that. And they, they throw everything away and they, you know, they might have families and they're giving up time with their family. You know, you know, you know yourself, yeah. dude. Yeah. You said you got a kid now at 13. It's mm. gone like that. Yeah, it goes so no, quickly. No, I turned two the other week. Yeah. Broke my heart. I'm like, oh my gosh, she's got a boyfriend soon, man. You <laughs> oh, know? she's so cute. Um, you know, so the, these things, you know, people need to be aware mm. as well, not just the health ramifications, but long term, how can, you know, it might not affect your health and you might get away with it. You might be lucky in that regard. Mm -hmm. But what have you got left at the end of the day? Yeah. And what kind of business is it turning into? And bodybuilding is not a very lucrative business. No. No offense. I love bodybuilding. Like, dude, I've seen your gym. I would love to go into your gym just like an hour a day and just squat and deadlift, you know, and do all that stuff. It looks, it looks awesome, but you just have to kind of think. Um, and it is, it is great. You feel so good coming out of it. But I think that's where, yeah, that's where like, for example, the Dorian Yates style of training for me was just a real eye opener and just wonderful. It was just like three days a week or, you know, just three days a mm. week or four days a week is all you need. Because I was going in there like twice a day, was I'm not a pro, but I think it's just risk balance. It's a, bit, a sense of balance. And that's what I try and give to, to patients when I see them is, you know, a sense of balance to life and what they're doing. But I think that's why I've always handled bodybuilding myself really well, dude. Yeah. Because I've always been at uni, working, you know, doing everything I'm doing. Bodybuilding's always been and always will be my hobby. When you identify yourself, when you think of Sam Pierce, who is he? Where does bodybuilding rank on the self-identification? So that's a good question. Mm. I like that one. Yeah. Because um, it was always number one, mm. you know, but, you know, I just, I openly say my priority is my daughter. Mm. You know, that's, that's, that's my number one thing, mm -hmm. you know, and bodybuilding for me, I would never do a show to try and win money for my daughter because it probably cost me 20 grand to get ready for the fucking show with all the um, flights and accommodation and everything like that to win a show that gets me $10,000. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, it helps my social media, it helps my following, it helps the trust in the brand and things like that. And, you know, it can obviously help the gym mm. and, and all that kind of exposure. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I look at it more in that way. Yeah. You, know? you are still kind of essentially building up your business still in that Correct. Yeah. So, so, so bodybuilding for me, as I said, like it's a, it's a vital aspect, mm. you know, but I can confidently say, I'm not sure other people could say this, but I can confidently say if I had to stop, if you came to me and said, you know, um, I'm actually waiting for my, I got my bloods done again the other day. I've got which, your results for you. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, you know, um, when we talk about that and you, you look at my results and say, dude, look, didn't want to say this on air, but you got to fuck off bodybuilding tomorrow. You're fucked. Yeah. Right? Mm. I could, I could go, man. Like if you said it was for my best interest to look after my kid and whatever it is, and I just had to go into coaching and mm -hmm. go on that path, that's what I'll do. I, I, it would suck, mm. you know, but you know, life takes, life, life takes certain turns and you have to just understand it for what it is. Yeah. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, I think you, you have to understand what your purpose and values are mm -hmm. um, because at the end of the day, whether you become the Mr. Olympia or you're just a gym rat that takes gear, it all comes to an end one day. Yeah, absolutely. You will have to stop it at some point. Yeah, and your, and body, your body will tell us when it's time to stop. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's where it's important to have somebody that can see it's time to stop rather than keep going and keep going and eventually you, know, you pass um, on. So the message today as we finish up, we've got to be proactive rather than reactive. Yeah, I think that's the case, yeah. Doc, look, I really appreciate you coming on, dude. Pleasure. Um, you know, as I said, I, got, I, I speak very highly for my clients. I've had a few dumbass has come see you and ask you for gear but um you are not here for that okay you are here um because you take care and pride um in what you do mm -hmm. and look any of the viewers or listeners i would love to push them your way because mm -hmm. i think you hold a wealth of knowledge and care you are one of the most caring doctors i've ever oh, come sure. across <laughs> um, yeah no seriously dude like it, it it's re it really surprised me as i said when you first welcomed me in you're talking me things i'm like well, you're actually interested into what i am it's not just like i got someone waiting outside fuck off Mm, you know, mm -hmm. 10 minutes is up, 
get out, you know. Yeah. So I would love to push more people your way. Mm-hmm. Um, can you give us the contact details and how to get in touch with you, uh, Instagram or whatever? Yeah. Yeah. So a good place is probably, I don't even have a website. So I still, I'm still building that one. So the best place is probably just Instagram at the moment. Um, and then my wife fields that. She's the nurse. Um, just send a message to her and then she'll get back to you. And what's the name for that one? Uh, Dr. Wellington Clinics, yeah. uh, I think. Um, so yeah, just on there and, and you'll see that I, I do a range of things. I do cosmetics, I'm a, I'm a GP mainly. I do cosmetics as well on a Thursdays. I enjoy that. It takes my mind off kind of routine parts of GP. So why you look so young? Possibly. Also, I was going to mention that anti-aging as well. So Are you suggest that because I look old? <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> hey, hey look, you, you look super tough and probably could totally uh, beat me up in a fight, so I'm not going to even uh, not go yeah. either. Uh, but yeah, so so you may say, well, what does this guy do? But, you know, as a GP, I can kind of, um, I have multiple interests, hence why I chose to be a GP. Um, and, uh, and so if you just send a message on Instagram, um, or even if you message Sam, he might be able to give you the, the, the details. Um, and more than happy to see you and, and, and help you out. But uh, like I say, you know, I, I'm professional, so I won't, you know, disparage you in any way if you come and you say I need t- testosterone, but um, you won't get it. Um, it's just a case of trying to keep you healthy and informed and, and taking care of you really as, a, as, as, as your doctor for 10, 20 years. That's what we want, doc. So I said thanks again. Um, yeah. And uh, thanks again to the viewers for listening in. If you guys did find wealth in this podcast, please go out and share. Uh, refer a friend, you know, um, you know, I'm never going to do ads and things like that, uh, like other top leading podcasts do. So um, that's the payment, refer a friend and uh, I can keep giving this info. So uh, until next time, guys, thank you and we're out. Cheers.